Hi, welcome to Daily Watch Talks, number 139. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. It's uh, it's adding up, and uh, we apologize for not being with you the past week, but uh, we promise we will. It won't happen again. Let's stick to the every Monday you get your 20 minutes of Watch Talk. Well, we have busy schedules. Yeah, we do. We do. And that's the good thing. The good <coughs> thing that brings a lot of footage and a lot of content that we can discuss with you. So today uh, I'm going to brief you on, on a very nice experience I had with Panerai. Uh, you have something regarding the Bonhams <coughs> auction pieces. I talked to the global head of watches, uh, Jonathan, yesterday in a live session on Daily Watch. And we discussed the uh, May 15 auction in uh, June 15. Superb. But let's start with uh, the, uh, the, the wrist check. Yes. That's, that's new. Every, we start Look every at you podcast. looking all summery. Yeah, I chose summer. And uh, what I'm wearing is the Oris Pro Pilot X Caliber 400. You probably have seen and heard about the watch. It was launched earlier this year during Watches and Wonders. Mm. And uh, I think you already wore it longer than I did. Yes, I did. So, so you, I just, just put it on the it wrist. Now. Yeah. And, uh, but of course, I've seen the watch. It's, it's very easy. It's very easy on the wrists, and I really start to like it. It's fitted with the Caliber 400, uh, which is a celebrated Caliber from Oris. Yeah, true. So it's a five-day power shirt. It's a 10-year service warranty. What does that mean? That means that you uh, don't have to worry. <laughs> you don't have to worry for 10 you years. You don't have to worry. Isn't that amazing? No worries. Worry less for 10 years. No, but the Caliber 400, we have discussed it in previous podcasts as well. Sure. It's really, it's, it's an in-house movement developed by Oris and it's really upping the game for the brand. Uh, it's a movement that is not dedicated to a specific model. So it's, it's, it's over the whole ranges or actually it will develop over all ranges. But it really fits good. It's a cool proposition also regarding the price. Titanium 39 millimeters. Very gentle watch. What are you wearing this week? I'm wearing the uh, Fallon Mary, the Mr. Grey. I bought it off Kickstarter. You know, the price is 350 bucks, yep. something like that. Yep. And it's just a gorgeous piece inspired by 40s and 50s uh, chronographs, especially, well, at least in my opinion, the 1463 of Patek. Um, it's a very heated discussion there is about the Fellow Mary, but they seem to be doing extremely well. Two young gentlemen, they were isolated in their Geneva flat during the worst days of the pandemic, and they came up with this wonderful idea. They did a Kickstarter, cam Kickstarter campaign, which sold out within two shakes of a lamb's tail. And now that they're, they're taking orders of another generation, they're going to produce as many as they get orders. So the blue dial of this version they produced as many as they got orders. So no limitations from the most recent version as well as the coming version. I know they're working on a mechanical movement as well. Yeah, they do. I don't know what the watch is gonna look like, but very exciting. It also, is... I'm wearing it on a, actually one of our own straps from Daily Watch. Of course, yeah. It just looks really, really good. I was trying to hunt down a nice mesh bracelet for it because it has, that just ups the whole vintage look around this great watch. You but already wear it with a mesh, right? I yeah, remember that. It was, but it was a little too thick. Okay. So okay. It, it deserves a slim, uh, a slim mesh bracelet, I think, because it's it's somewhat of a slim watch. So Furla Murray, uh, the comments are open now because I think the heated discussion will be there. But we have to admit, uh, the brand Furla Murray is a very welcome addition to the watch industry and the watch world. Two young bright guys. Beautiful proposition. Have a look. Well, I know Patek collectors who bought this one. Oh, that's one. Last time I was in Geneva Salon, one of the people working there, I'm not going to mention his name, I asked him, are you wearing a 1463? He goes like, no, 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 no. So he was wearing a fellow Mary. I'm like, wow, you work at Patek in the Salon in, the, in Geneva and you're wearing a fellow Mary? Good on you, man. Okay. Um, I'm going to brief you on the Panerai experience. To be more precise, the, the Eileen experience. I had the pleasure and the honor to be part of that in the past weekend. And of course, when you when you talk about experience, it's a buzzword. Mm -hmm. Many brands use it, and especially the, the, the high-end luxury watch brands or luxury brands in general are quite skilled in making sure that purchasing an expensive watch is not just a transaction. There's something extra. 
Usually it is about having a glass of champagne when you sign the order, being invited for a private event, a collector dinner. They know exactly how to treat you. Panerai is taking that uh, since last year to a next level and they do on lim specific limited editions, they introduce the additional Panerai experience. Yeah. So um, I have to warn you, there's also an NFT involved. That's where it starts. You, of course there is. You, you get an NFT, but the, the most important thing with the Eileen experience is that you purchase the PAM, uh, what is it, 144, the Radio Mir Eileen experience watch. It's a beautiful watch, it's steel, and it has elements from the original Eileen, and that's what I have to explain. The Eileen is the sailboat that was built in 1936 and that was bought by Panerai in 2006, basically as a wreck. So they restored the boat to its former glory and that both boat plays an important role in um, experiences, events that Panerai is doing in the Mediterranean. Very much so. I mean, the, the former CEO, Mr. Angelo Bonatti, he loves sailing. Uh, he has a boat where the name of the boat is actually Why Not? Yeah. Uh, and he was a, he's a very experienced sailor and uh, he saw the wreck of Eileen uh, during a trip in the, the Caribbean. The Caribbean, yeah. And uh, it turns out that Eileen was actually in a Duran Duran video. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that, really. Yeah, Sam Lebong. Sam Lebong was actually also staying on Eileen some years ago. I was looking through the through the the guest book. I was like, hey, <laughs> it's Simon de Burton almost. I was said. Of course, it's sorry about that, Simon. Sam Lebong. Sam Lebong. Um, no, he was. Um, I forgot the name of that song. Uh, Her name is Rio. I think the song was called Rio. That's Rio. And that's he sits a, that's in a... the front of of Eileen sailing away. So. He actually has uh, a relation to Eileen, which is why he visited some years but that, ago. That was pre-Bonatti, right? That was before Panerai bought the ship, or was it after? Oh, no, 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 no. That, that was, was way before. Yeah. That was way before. And I guess they just wore it out, so they left it in the Caribbean for it to be a wreck. Yeah. Uh, and I know that termites had just eaten most of the, wa uh, um, of, the, of the boat. And rumor has it that Mr. Bonatti and Richemont, of course, they could have bought three brand new... Scottish catch uh, instead of renovating Eileen. But every Friday, Mr. Bonatti would drive from Milan to the to uh, to the to oversee the repair reparations of uh, Eileen. Eileen is now uh, based in Via Reggio, mm -hmm. and that is and they have actually uh, because I ask what is the situation. Eileen mm. is owned by a company that is dedicated to the operation of the boat. So that's the maintenance. That's that's. The, the whole crew, there's a whole crew with a full-time uh, captain yep. who was there as well. Um, and that company is owned by, by Panerai. Um, it's a beautiful ship and, and the experience, and that was my starting point, is bringing you really into the world of Panerai. Imagine you purchase the watch, which is 40,000 euros, and you get invited to a trip uh, that where you experience stuff that basically money can buy. And that's, I had long talks with uh, Alessandro uh, uh, Ficarelli. Yep. He is the, the, the CMO, the, the marketing yep. boss of the brand. Based in Milan. Based in Milan. And he said, what we want to do is not to show off, not everything should be expensive per se, but it should be unique. It should be something that you cannot buy. And that's basically what we did. I, it was a trip for three days and I literally hardly set foot on shore during those three days. It was from boat to boat to boat. I entered 17 boats in three days. That's including all the tenders that brings you yeah, to the yeah, larger yeah. boat, of course. Yeah. But we went to restaurants also by boat. We went to a unique privately owned island, Ligali. Yeah, I read about it in Financial Times some weekends ago. Yeah, it's uh, completely unique. It's, a, it's, it's where where Bono and Sting are, are, are celebrating and holidaying, and you can only get there by private invitation of the owner. Fantastic. It's a beautiful uh, island, and so we spent time there, we had lunch there. Point is that Panerai is not only proving a unique experience, uh, it's, it's, it's actually an ambassador for Italy in general. 
you enjoy the good food, you enjoy the friendship, mm. you enjoy music. So I really think, uh, and I also had the opportunity to, to talk to some of the uh, buyers who were there, uh, and they looked happy. They had a smile from ear to ear for three full days. So it Well, it's the Dolce Vita, isn't it? Exactly. On the, on the ocean. On the ocean. So this was related to this watch, the Eileen experience. Later this year, there will be a Tuscany-based experience related to the Perpetual. Okay. 33 pieces. All right. And there you will find the origins of Panerai, which is Florence and the environment. Um, so I think it's it's really good what they do. Of course, it's an investment, and it's, it is. But it is. It. I think as a as a collector, you you will be a fan for life, experiencing this. Well, they invest in the consumers, which I think is great. Uh, they they. Uh, uh, they introduced uh, the experience in 2019. Yeah. Uh, the Mike Horn experience, unfortunately, never occurred. You know, that during COVID, they were supposed to do the Mike Horn experience, but they never they never made it succeed. Yeah. So, but I mean, Mike Horn, he has had some great uh, experiences also, you know, doing his Mike, Mike Horn thing in Switzerland, where you go bicycling and, and just do rough things and climb mountains, etc. So he's showing his, his very he-man, uh, which is also great for the brand. He's a long-standing ambassador for Panerai. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Mr. Johan Rupert, uh, he met um, Mr. Horn many, many years ago, and he was so impressed of, of Mike Horn on stage that you know, he grabbed a hold of him afterwards and he said, he took on his own banner, Panerai, and he put it on the wrist of Mike Horn. He said, from now on, you will only wear Panerai watches. That's how it goes. And yeah. I actually, I met another ambassador, which is Jeremy Jonesy. Good guy. You know him as well. He is uh, living the good life, yes. beautiful destinations, supporting and creating social media presence for beautiful holiday destinations. So he had his fair share of beautiful places in the world. He was really impressed. And he also mentioned that this is also pure fun for him because he was already wearing Panerai before he even got affiliated with the brand. So a true fan and an ambassador. True, excellent. Good for Panerai. Now you were accusing me of sounding like a salesman and uh, when I was talking about Bacheron. I'm accusing you of sounding of a salesman of Italy. Everything yes, Italian. yes, and I, uh, yeah, blame me for that. No, but no, I love Italy no already for a long time, and it's it 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 is uh, La Dolce Vita is there. Yeah, uh, it was a new environment because I've never been to the Amalfi Coast, uh -huh. and and that is, yeah, quite spectacular. It is really spectacular, wonderful place. I've never been there with my family, but I should take them there definitely. But I I think it's 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 a good thing that they invest in the consumer. Of course, a lot of retailers, they don't have the possibility to invite their consumers to experiences like this. No. But again, the overruling point of this is emotional uh, value. Of course, of course. Um, and I, I went to an event with, uh, with Uplo yesterday, um, and um, I'm not very fond of, of uh, hearing Uplo as a laughing stock brand. I think they're doing really cool stuff. It's not fair at all. I was wearing a, a you know, a purple tubular, I was like in sapphire case. I, this is totally summer. The one day they launched on uh, Watches and Wonders. They probably did. Not quite sure. Yeah, okay. I had one in my hand that didn't work, so maybe that was the one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Patricio, who's doing uh, the podcast today, we, he and I, we went there to do some videos and to, to do some pictures. And it, you just, it puts a smile on your face because you get all these bright colors. Yeah. And usually, you know, I, I compare to to other brands and I say, okay, listen, if we go to a nightclub, you have these two VIP rooms. One of them is full of the people of another brand that I can't mention the, the, the name of. You know, they're sitting there, they're talking about, oh, look at my tourbillon. They're sitting with the little loops and uh, they're asking the DJ to turn the music down a little bit because, you know, listen to my minute repeater. We're so serious. We're so serious. Yeah. And then you look to the right and you see the Hublot booth, you know, women dancing on the, on the, on the tables, you know, the fireworks coming out of uh, magnum bottles of champagne. They're having a lot of fucking fun. Yeah. And I think people uh, who wear the, the Hublots, they like to have fun. I think that's also, that's, that's the, the, the famous story about uh, Biver in the early days when he was promoting, when he was yes. building the brand. Yeah that he was at the hotspots in, uh, in, in South of France, uh, Club Saint-Concin in yeah. Saint-Tropez, yeah. 
and then he was simply spotting who was wearing a hublot. And if you were sitting there with your hublot having an expensive lunch, he came by and he said, lunch is on me. No, 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 no. No, no, it was way more elegant. Okay. I think Pierre, when he was younger, much younger, yeah. he would send Pierre around the tables and, and Pierre would come back and go, Dad, table number 12. Uh, one of the guys, other girls are wearing a hublot. And he would ask the waiter to tell them, you know, this is Mr. Waiter, I'm going to take the full bill of that table over there. And once the table asked for the bill, they go like, it's already been taken care of by Hublot. Imagine the talk around Saint-Tropez. And people go like, I think I have an Hublot bag in my drawer. Next time I go to that club, I'm going to, I'm going to start wearing it. Actually, it's brilliant marketing. I'm wearing my Hublot at every single lunch and dinner I do in the city here, but they never pay me. <laughs> I bought it at McDonald's driving the other day. Nothing happened. I still had to pay full price. No, but that's brilliant. And my point was, uh, is that it also adds to the fun of Hublot. Yeah. That it's, it's, an, it's an expressive brand. It's the good life. It's the good life. Yeah. It's entertainment. Yeah. And that is what, and, and so they sh they, they're not laughing stock at all. They're, yeah. they're, they're really doing a great job and I really admire the brand. Yeah, they have good people, they have great staff. We're gonna meet them next week. In, yeah, uh, we're going in to Switzerland, Switzerland next yeah. week uh, for a whole full week. Yeah. <gasps> Again, uh, all right, so we're gonna see them in New York, a little, little outside Geneva. Okay, um, I'm interested, you, you talked to Bonhams. Yes, uh, I had a live uh, session with Jonathan. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, um, he's head of watches at Bonhams. So there's an auction in London on June 15. And what I like about Bonhams, of course, we all know Philips. Yeah. And we know that of Philips, course. they are making the results of centuries. Yeah. White glove sales, the highest results ever, another world record broken, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What I do like about the Bonhams auction, uh, not only this one, but several others, are the art pieces that you didn't expect. So I, 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 I was talking to Jonathan about three pieces that I really like. Uh, for instance, the, the lot number 43 is a Seamaster from around 1967, but not just a Seamaster, it's a military issued Seamaster. Okay. And the lot just after is lot 44 which is a, a, it's a later, it's a 1976, uh, sorry, 75, uh, Rolex Submariner Ref 5513 slash 5517. Also a military issue. It, it, the vessel is not on. The, you know, the, the current owner, uh, he lost it during a dive. He's a professional diver himself. He did purchase the watch though from a military person. That's a lot of wabi-sabi. That's a lot of wabi-sabi <laughs> going on there. And of course yeah. you can only fit a, a NATO strap to the watch as the, as the pin, uh, the shoulder pins is belted to the watch. So it's never been offered with a, with a bracelet. And also what I, what I really like is, um, is the Type 20, uh, which is just a great and legendary uh, pilot's watch. What brand? And this is the one that we really like. We mentioned it before, the Method Tissot. Okay. I don't even know if I pronounce it rightly, but Tissot, when we walk yeah. around, and especially in Geneva, and we walk at the, you know, the, 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 the smallest shops, the one that sells Swiss army knives and, and souvenirs, they also have the Method Tissots. But that's, it's not the wow you get, but when you look at a Method Tissot from around 1960, the Type 20, uh, the chronograph, the flyback chronographs are back there, and you just go, wow, you know, they were really part of it. And it was used by, for instance, uh, French Air Force. Yeah. I picked those three uh, uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful watches because they have a military background. And to me, when a watch has been military issued, it's a tool watch. It was made for a professional need. Yeah. yeah. Some of them, of course, never uh, uh, saw a uh, first day of war. Um, but again, you have to admire that the heydays of military issued watches were pretty strong during the 60s and 70s. Tudor has a wonderful, wonderful DNA. The Cold War thing, uh, yeah, probably. Not so much the Cold War, no. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really military issue, especially for military divers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we also, I know that Omega just came out with, uh, with a version for, for, the, for the Danish frogman. Yeah. Uh, which Linda Verdelin made a wonderful octopus for. 20 and, pieces, something, yeah. No, it's, it's not limited. Oh, it's not limited, okay, yeah. If you look at, at the military pieces that Little Merlin did, it's for uh, existing and future frogmen. Okay, yeah. So basically, yeah, yeah. are yeah. you doing your education now? You can order it once you, yeah. you, you qualify you have for to, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how many pieces that Omega did. It's quite a secret uh, project. 
But I happened to, to meet one of the guys who proudly showed it to me, and it's a great looking piece. So the Type 20, so those were your three um, uh, uh, Bonhams. Uh, what I like about Bonhams, I'm, I'm fully with you, I'm a fan of Bonhams uh, mm. because of the surprise effect. Yes. And that's basically what we're all doing. And with a, every collector is always a bit of a trader. You want, so you, you, if you don't have unlimited funds, you have to wheel and deal mm. to sell, and then you can buy, and, mm. and, and you want to be surprised. And even more than with Philips, with Philips, it's, it's pretty much expected what you will get. Sure. And with Bonhams, by the way, also with Anticorum, it can go in many directions. Well, we went there with Anticorum. Yeah. I mean, we, we were there for, for was it during Geneva Watch Days? Yeah, last year. Probably was, yeah. a year ago, yeah. And we went to several auctions there. Of course, there was only Watch was a big thing. Yeah. Uh, great numbers, you know, huge amounts being traded there. Uh, of course, to, to benefit for, for a good cause. And then we went to Anticorum and Christie's and Sotheby's. We went everywhere. Philips as well, right? We went also to tent, Philips, to Philips, Philips the, the, yeah. the tent in La Reserve. But the Anticorum was quaint. You know, it was at a hotel. And what I really liked was they would stand up to make phone bids. The phone bidders would stand up. Whenever they had a bid, they would stand up. So yeah. the auctioneer could say, okay, from you, thank you very much. Um, so it's good to see how the how the auctions uh, uh, they work differently. They each have the, the and rules. you have the option. That, that's with 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 Bonhams and with uh, Anticorum. They're of course also a bit in a different league. You can I noticed at that specific Anticorum auction, mm. but with Bonhams, Bonhams it will be similar. You can actually purchase a Patek for four thousand, five thousand euros or mm. Swiss francs. Mm. Of course, you have a vintage piece, and probably not the most in demand. But you have, if you want to have a Patek or, or any other vintage piece, mm. it's, the surprise effect is really, we sh actually, we should, uh, we should look if we can buy something at some point. Well, the funny thing is um, uh, a great guy on Instagram called Mr. Enthusiast. He has a past in advertising, which uh, I do as well. Uh, and uh, he has this Viva Bastardo. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny, you know. He puts stickers. He also on has a there. very odd car collection. He yes, said, but yeah. that's what I what I like about his watch collection as well as his car collection. The oddities, you yeah. know. He would he would love a, a Ford Escort. Uh, you know, he likes his uh, Lancia's Betas. You know, he has these these great cars. Uh, but his watch collection is also quite quaint. And uh, I was talking to him, and I, I did a post where I said I I have a Mister Enthusiast moment right now <laughs> because I bought the Tudor. Um, uh, P01, uh, P01, P for prototype, uh, and it's 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 an ugly watch, and it's not a very popular watch either. It's mm. it just stands if the retailer has it, it just sits there in the window, being very lonely. So I wanted to give it some love, and I bought it, and he pimped a P01. Uh, you know he you know coffee stains and tea stains and what have you in order to tint the, the, the luminous material yeah, yeah. and you know he scratched it up and put this uh, really worn uh, textile strap on the watch which made it look like the prototype so and he was t we were talking about what to collect and he says the important thing is to find it before anybody else so the hunt if i gave you a thousand to twelve hundred euros what 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 would you what would you go for which appeals to you but not necessarily to your audience. No, I, but for me, watch collection is all collecting is always very personal. I don't care about status, about market value, and that makes me a lousy investor probably. But it also makes it gives me the the the, the wow effect mm. every now and then. So I'm. It's difficult for me to say upfront what would I buy, but I would definitely browse into the next Bonhams catalog, the next Anticorum. To maybe on eBay, I don't know. I would look into what will I find, and of course, I have my preferences. We we all know, and if you have seen uh, more of our episodes, you probably know a bit what my taste is compared to your taste. So um, it will be surprising for sure what I will come up with. Do you have an example? Maybe an Abel discovery. Of course, that's a very nice one. That is in the price range that you're pre -owned, suggesting. Of course, yes, pre -owned. yes. Yeah, yes, we're, we're yeah. talking pre-owned. So let's maybe we should make uh, some kind of challenge. Let's take some budget and let's go on the run for a watch. Yeah, I mean, uh, top of mind. What a, again? That's from your childhood. My childhood also is 40s watches. And recently, I bought, oh, yeah. I bought the Cosmonaut, 
with the alarm bit, you know, it's chronographed with mechanical alarm made by with the Paul, Paul, Paul Gerber. Paul Gerber. Yeah. Paul yeah. Gerber made it. It's just a cool watch. The reason why I loved it when I was a kid was because it looked like a Rolex Daytona. That I bought on a Swedish auction. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. A lot more than a thousand or twelve hundred. But that made me look into to uh, to forties as I recall it. And uh, I remember a friend of mine, he was actually distributing the 40s back then. Yeah. And to me, it was just a great brand. And if I look at, at the pre-owned pieces right now, you know, the PVD uh, pieces of, of uh, 40s right now, you know, you take a B52, sorry, B42, yeah. 42 millimeters, um, not the B52, which is a bummer. Uh, but the B42, you know, with a big winding crown, I saw one pre-owned recently, PVD, just a great dial, just a really military looking aviator's watch at around 1100 euros. It's mechanical, it's a Swiss made watch with a Swiss made movement. So that, made, that could be, yeah. And other brands that come to mind here in, in the same league as Fortis, uh, Hanhardt, Sin. Tutima. Tutima. Yeah. There is so much beauty to find. Mm. Let's, maybe we should search. We should. And then share it with you guys, of course, and girls. By the way, and this uh, is a new premium product from the Daily Watch uh, web show, huh? Yeah, this I'm gonna I'm gonna use it for my uh, travel next week. Uh, okay, great. Just to, to test how it works, and yeah. uh, but, but it looks really good. It's really it does. It's it's hand. It's uh, it's looking good. It's the great quality leather. It's made in Italy. It, it's made in Italy, and it's yeah. very effective to take uh, in your in your luggage. Yeah. So um, I think forty two millimeters. It looks like, especially if it's a chronograph, that's the maximum size. Yeah, of, of of this product. Yeah, the Panerai will not work with this one. No, That's because it has more of a squarish case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's nice. You yeah. can find it on dailywatch.co. Yeah, um, I product. think uh, we are running out of time, or we already. Yeah. What's the time? Like yeah, it's uh, it's like uh, it doesn't matter. Anymore. It doesn't matter. No. Okay, we went way over time. Sorry about that. Okay, well, we had a lot to talk. Yeah. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Please yeah. leave the comments on anything we discussed yeah. or anything else. Yeah. Next week we will be traveling yeah. and pretty sure we will get a lot of new stuff to discuss with you. Absolutely. Be good. Remember Bye. to subscribe. Bye.